Hey guys, it's Jenny with Becoming Homesteaders. Today I will be doing my February 2023 garden tour. There's not much going on in the gardens, but we are going to talk about the no-till method that I used to put in some new beds last year for my vegetables. And I will be showing you uh, where we will be adding more beds this year for more vegetables. I hope everyone's getting motivated for the growing season this year. And I hope you find my videos helpful and inspiring. Remember to give them a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel, Becoming Homesteaders. And look for another video coming up real soon. I will be starting my brassicas. Well, it is February 2023 and I thought we would do a garden tour. I don't think I'm going to go in detail like I did with my fall and January tours of each individual garden because nothing's really changed. There are a few green things trying to pop through, but for the most part, everything is about the same as it was in January. But this video, I would like to really talk about my no-till method that I did last year. So it was, we started that the end of February, beginning of March, that whole process. And that consisted of these three raised beds here or in ground beds. They're just elevated a little bit. Just wanted to go in detail with that. So we're going to talk about that and how I did that and if it was successful or not. And um, we're going to talk about adding some new beds this year for our potatoes. So we're excited about that and it's a beautiful day so i thought we should get out here do this while we can because it is february and you never know but it is a little chilly it is 37 so it's chilly but the sun feels good so we're going to do a tour today quick look at the herb garden not much going on up here that's any different from last month this is the up front portion of my flower bed not much going on here. I will show you just real quick. My yarrow does have a little bit of green on it, so that's exciting. But everything else is pretty much still hiding. And I have decided to definitely make this cut flower garden larger this year. So back here is where we have a lot of daylilies. I'm going to take a lot of these out and extend the cut flower bed back there or cut flower garden back towards the back of the flower bed this year. So I'm really excited about that. I've started some seeds indoors to put in there, some snapdragons, some marigolds. I'll be doing some zinnias again this year, but this was just very successful last year. I just loved it. Okay, so I'm sitting in the back corner garden and thought I would just talk a little bit about the raised beds that I did or the no-till beds that I did last year. It worked out great last year and I just wanted to tell you what I did versus what the traditional no-till method is. So normally with the no-till you plan this in the season prior like so for this year if we wanted to put a bed in we would get it ready and plant next year. Well, my method, because I'm impatient, um, I got it ready and planted in it the same year. Usually you are recommended to do it in layers. So the first layer is usually um, cardboard or newspaper, something to smother the area that you will be planting in. And then the next layer then is recommended to put some sort of organic matter. Uh, leaf mulch, grass clippings, composted manure, things like that. You usually use wood chips on that very top layer. Um, then you let that sit for a season and it should be ready to plant then the next season. My method was a little bit different and it worked really good for us. We, um, I wasn't sure if it would or not, it was an experiment, but I will show pictures of the process of actually putting the beds in. I did take pictures, planting in them, and I did a crop rotation too, where I did a spring and a summer crop. Both crops did amazing. Um, I wasn't sure if they would, but they both did really good. 
what I did is we have a compost pile and it's primarily leaves. So we did the leaf mulch on the bottom. On top of that, then we had purchased at uh, the beginning of March, a load, one yard of composted manure. This was from a local farm. It is organic compost manure that has been sitting for a year. So it is safe to plant in. You do want to make sure that the manure that you're using, if you plan to plant, has been sitting and it is seasoned or it's ready to plant. So we did the leaf mulch on the bottom. We did the composted manure on the top. Then I did another layer of uh, leaf mulch on top of that. And then on top of that, we purchased a yard of garden soil. This was a mixture of organic matter and topsoil. Uh, it was supposed to be very, very good soil to plant in. So halfway through that process though, let me back up the leaf mulch and the manure, I then did a kind of like an aerating that you would normally do with a broad fork. Um, I didn't have a broad fork, so I used my pitchfork and it worked out great. So what I did was I put the pitchfork in the ground like you would a broad fork and just kind of rip the soil underneath of those layers that I had put in. That way, some of the layers that you're putting in can kind of fall down into the existing lawn, which is what I had, rips up some of the grass so that things can kind of incorporate without tilling. Uh, it's just an easier way on your soil because you wanna keep all of those good beneficial insects and the carbon and nitrogen left in the soil. You don't wanna disturb all of that. Then um, after I did the aerating with my pitchfork, <laughs> I then did the other two layers of leaf mulch and then that topsoil blend on top of that. I let that sit for about a month and then I was ready to plant and I planted cabbage first. It did amazing. I was so surprised. We did cabbage in the first row, broccoli and cauliflower in the second row, and then celery and some miscellaneous items in the third row. All three rows did amazing. Then after the cabbages and broccoli were taken out, we planted beans. So highly successful. That's what we plan to do again this year if we're doing any of um, the raised beds like I did last year. And so then we're also going to be putting in a potato bed. The potato bed, unfortunately, we will be tilling. So there are times to till and times not to. When you're doing a root crop, I do think if it's a brand new garden, I think it should be tilled. This will probably be the one and only time I till this area. Then next year it should be fine and okay to plant potatoes in. But because of the top layer, we will take the grass off and till that we'll get some um, composted manure again to work in with the soil. I'll probably add some of my leaf compost just to make it nice and fluffy. We are in Ohio zone 6a so it is heavy clay soil that we're working with. So that's why we will need to till this year and try to work in some of those really good things that's going to make our soil a little easier for those root crops to grow. If you have that hard clay soil and you try planting carrots or potatoes or sweet potatoes, any sort of root crop, it's going to have a real hard time growing because of this, the soil being so hard. Um, that's our goal this year with the potatoes to try to till it up, get it nice and fluffy and airy and keep it that way so that the potatoes can grow then and burrow down into the soil.
here's the existing garden. Those are the rows that we added last year with my no-till method. Then this is the outline for the new garden area that we will be putting in. It doesn't look very big, but I feel like it's a big chunk of our yard, but we're excited to have a new area for potatoes. So last year we did um, potatoes in raised beds and that was an epic fail. <laughs> The in-ground method I feel like will be better. We have done potatoes at my dad's house before. It's always been in-ground. So I feel like I will have better success this year planting them in-ground rather than raised beds. Last year we went and purchased some soil and we actually put the potatoes in this raised bed and a bunch of grow bags. The soil we used was called a NutriBlend soil and I just think it was too rich in nitrogen. So it grew these big beautiful top plants and the potatoes were duds. <laughs> Underneath there was barely any potatoes that we were able to harvest so that was very disappointing. This year, we're hoping to get a better yield. I did the same method with the sweet potatoes up front in a raised bed. And again, big, beautiful vines, no sweet potatoes. That is the raised bed that we had our sweet potatoes in. Uh, we have done sweet potatoes before here and they did very well. I had the great idea to put them in a raised bed because we do have a problem with critters eating them. So this raised bed actually has a wire bottom so that nothing can get in underneath and eat the potatoes. Unfortunately, our soil was again just too rich in nitrogen. So it grew these big, beautiful vines, which looked amazing looked like I was really doing a good job but then come time to harvest my potatoes we had no sweet potatoes underneath and if there were potatoes they were very small and thin so not a good soil to grow potatoes in they like that phosphorus and potassium rather than the nitrogen this is where we put our tomatoes. I am taking one of these rows out and putting it in the back for the peas in the back behind the potatoes that I'm going to be adding this year. We're gonna do three rows of peas and then when we take the peas out, we will be doing black beans. So I loved these hog panels that we had. They were just too close together and I clearly did not do a good job of covering the soil to prevent all of these weeds, but that's pretty much the only thing that is green in here. We do have a little bit of green growth here. Some daisies are still looking green. Not much else here though in the middle raised bed where our wood pile is. Okay, so these are the three rows that we did I know it's hard to envision because there are lots of leaves on there. I'll throw up some pictures of where they were. These um, rows did so good. And I thought I would just come over and I haven't really looked yet either this year, but just to see what the soil looks like. So you can see there's lots of the leaf mulch that we put down, which is so good, but everything looks really good in here. This looks like really great soil. So I feel like it's even going to have a better um, product this year. This is what you want though. You want all of that really great soil. Yay, looks good. I do feel pretty good about this though. I feel like it's gonna be an even better season this year with these three. We're gonna add a little bit. So I'm gonna move this bed and make it this way and scoot it back and add another row right here. I'll probably be putting my cauliflower back there. I'm really excited. I got this beautiful orangey tangerine colored cauliflower that I'm gonna try this year. So. We're going to put that right back there. 
All right, guys, that's it for the February tour. Not much going on in the garden yet. Next month, I feel like will be an exciting month. I'm excited to get some things started out in the garden, which we will be planting potatoes, peas, and some of our greens next month, the middle of March here in my Ohio garden. And if you want more information on that no-till method that I did, I do have an article over on my blog, becominghomesteaders.com. Check that out. It'll give you a little more um, information on how I did things and you might be able to print it out and take it with you if you're interested in doing that. Having something written down is always easier, at least for me, to remember things. So I hope it was helpful. I hope you guys try something new this year, put in a new bed, start some vegetables or flowers and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks guys. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys, in my garden and look for some upcoming videos. One, I'm starting my brassica seeds. So lots of broccoli, cauliflower, cabbages, leafy greens, and two, we will be tapping some maple trees. So we're excited to have more maple syrup.